Hi, race fans. Sean Hartwig from uh, Ontario, Canada. I'm a team driver for Hobbywing North America. Today I want to go over one of the uh, racing systems that I'm going to be installing in my Castor SCT-10 one-tenth scale electric four-wheel drive short course truck. Today I want to talk about the Z-Run SCT Pro speed controller and the matching motor that I'm going to be putting in. Now, when you first look at the packaging, uh, it actually sh tells you what it's for. You can either use it in a short course truck or a buggy, either one tenth scale or one eighth scale. And this is a brushless speed controller. When you look at it, actually up in the top corner here is what they call an anti counterfeit hologram label. Uh, this is insurance for you, the consumer, to make sure that you're buying. Uh, an actual product instead of a counterfeit one. If you were to pick one of these up and it did not have the hologram on it, chances are you do not have the real McCoy and you won't be able to take advantage of Hobbywing's extended warranty now. The original warranty was only 90 days. They have now extended that to 180 days to protect your investment. Let's move on. On the side of the package, there are some icons or some symbols that tell you uh, what this box is actually good for, or what the contents are capable of. Uh, you've got your censored system, which means there's a sensor wire that you can run between your speed controller and your motor. You've got the short course truck ESC logo. Self-explanatory, it means this is meant for one of the short course trucks, or as I said, you can put it in a buggy as well. Low voltage cutoff, very important if you're going to be running LiPo batteries. Everybody knows if you over discharge a LiPo battery, it doesn't come back. It's a waste of money, you just killed your battery. You've also got overheat protection. This is also very handy if you're running in hot climates or maybe you're a backyard basher and you like to run the crap out of it. Uh, that can generate a lot of heat. And if you're also over gearing it for super top end speed or you're timing it or whatever, you have the uh, overheat protection in order to shut the motor down in case you exceed a specific temperature to again uh, protect it from damage. You've also got firmware update. That's nice to know if you're using the programmable 2-in-1 program box you can use your USB cable to patch it between your uh, computer and your speed controller and you can update the firmware to make sure you've got the uh, latest version running it. You've also got your program box supported. Now the program box actually is this little guy right here. Uh, this is a nice pocket size trackside programming box that allows you to attach it to your speed controller to change any of the parameters or customize your setup. Nice little product, doesn't take up a lot of room in your toolbox or your track bag. Now what I want to do next is talk about what you get in the actual box. Now. I've already gone ahead and I've done some soldering and I've done some assembly already because I really want to get this into my truck and start doing some testing. When you get yours, it will not have battery ends on it. I've gone ahead and I've installed a Dean's connector because that's what I choose to run on all my vehicles. I've also directly soldered it right to my motor. I haven't used any bullet connectors or anything because I didn't want to have a chance of a wire popping off in case I go over a really hard jump or maybe tangle with another vehicle. Um, the next item in the box that you're going to get will be the heat shrink which comes as part of the kit so you can customize your wiring and make sure it's all nice and clean. They give you some cable ties too for wire management. You get a replacement on off switch cover. This protects your on off switch from debris and moisture and water in case you get into a damp climate. That's kind of a nice little add on here. You've also got your patch cable. This allows you to attach your 2-in-1 program box directly to your speed controller, and I'll show that in a few minutes. You also get your plated bullet connectors too. Again, I chose not to run these, but that's just me. And they include some nice little decals that you can decorate your vehicle with. Now, next I'm going to talk a little more about the speed controller. You can see I've got mine mounted to the uh, mount that comes with it. I attached it with some double-sided tape and uh, attached it with some of the flat socket head cap screws. That will allow me easy installation into my short course truck. Now this particular speed controller is rated at 120 amps. Uh, you can use it in 1 tenth or 1 eighth scale vehicles. Uh, buggy or even truggy for that matter. Again, short course truck is what I'm putting it in. 
You've also got the um, capability of running 6 to 12 cells in either nickel metal hydride or NICAD batteries or LiPo batteries from 2 to 4 cells. This has a 6 volt 3 amp built in BEC as well which is also really good if you're using any high torque batteries or sorry high torque servos uh, you don't need to use an external BEC to power your whole system. Um, you've also got uh, the availability to program it using the set button on the actual speed controller uh, and following the LED blinking lights or you can use the two-in-one program box which I'm going to illustrate for you. Um, the motor actually is a pretty nice unit. This one here is a uh, part number 3672, the Z-Run 3672, which is a 4000 kV 4.5 turn brushless motor. It has a 5 millimeter shaft on it. It's got some really nice bearings and some pretty strong magnets as well. So I'm, I'm anticipating this to actually throw some pretty good roosts and give me some really decent power on the track. I'm only going to run a 7.4 volt uh, 2 cell LiPo battery. Um, I'm anticipating again that this is going to give me some pretty good power for on the track. Now, what I thought I'd do now is also talk about the programming. Your uh, battery wire here, or sorry, your fan wire unplugs, and you actually use your patch cable to attach it, which allows you to make your program box uh, changes. Now, that's kind of a nice idea because when you've got your ESC wire, uh, attached to your receiver, you don't have to open up the box, pull this out, and attach it to the programmer. You can actually leave it installed and just go through the uh, fan wire. I'm going to do that for you right now just to show you how it works. Now I've unplugged the fan. I'm going to attach my uh, program box wire. <laughs> there we go. Big fingers. I'll attach it to the side of the program box and I'll plug it into a battery on the side here. Switch your power on and this is now going to give you your screen showing you the Hobbywing version that uh, the program is actually running on. Press your item button to connect to the ESC. Gives you what profile you're running in. The first mode actually is forward, reverse, and brake, which is sport mode. Um, I don't run it in that because I uh, race it, so I can't use reverse. So if you uh, hit your value button here, you can actually move to the next function, which is forward and reverse, or forward and brake. That's what I'm going to be running, so you press OK, and it actually saves the data. Now the next one is drag brake. I'm not going to attach any drag brake to it. That would uh, cause a pretty severe endo if I go over a jump and actually let off on the throttle. Voltage protection is 3.2 volts. You can cycle through and uh, change it to whatever you want. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, 3.4 volts for this vehicle just to give it a little extra protection on the cells. Uh, you've got punch control which is at level 5. I'm going to leave that as the factory setting. You've got brake force at 50%, reverse force at 25, I'm not going to touch that, I'm not using reverse. Initial brake I'll leave at the factory drag brake, but you can go through and change that from 0 to 20 to 40 to drag brake. Neutral range is factory set at 9%. AMS timing, that's actually 15 degrees at uh, position number 5. That's the factory setting. Again, I'm going to leave that alone and test it first before I make any changes to that. Overheat protection, definitely a good thing to leave enabled. That way, again, if you reach a high temperature, it shuts off and saves your investment. Motor rotation, uh, counterclockwise or clockwise. In this case, it's going to be counterclockwise for my vehicle because of the orientation in comparison to the uh, spur gear. Lipo cell auto calculate. I don't want to auto calculate so I'm actually going to go through and set it to 2 cell 7.4 volts which I'll press the OK button to save. I can also restore the default settings if I think I made a mistake uh, so I'll run through it really quick again. Drag brake 0% 3.4 volts per cell. I didn't press OK last time so I'll do that now to program it. That's how you use your 2-in-1 program box 
um, which is actually again a really nice tool. I think it's under 20 bucks to buy. Really nice investment. It's easier for carrying than uh, than bringing your PC or your laptop to the track. So I shut it off, unplug it, put my fan wire back in. Hopefully that goes any easier than the program wire. And uh, that's pretty much it for the uh, for the unit right now. Um, your motor wires are also uh, color coded A, B, and C. The uh, A wire is blue. The B wire is C. Or sorry, the A wire is blue. B wire is yellow. C wire is orange, and that matches with the motor A, B, and C. Uh, your sensor wire is right here, which is already attached. That's going to plug into the sensor port here when I get it installed. So, thank you very much for watching the video. I appreciate your time. The next video will be of the vehicle when I have it, uh, the system actually installed in my uh, car. So, I'd also like to thank Team Hobbywing for signing me to the 2013 race season, and I look forward to racing your products and uh, promoting it at the track with all the interested parties. Remember, drivers, drive smarter, not harder.